do you completely forget the horrible things that they do or minimize them or wonder if things even happen the way you thought they happened, almost like as you're in a fog and totally forget what happened. Has that happened to you? There is a name for it and there's a reason for it. So, so this abuse amnesia, this amnesia that happens, forgetting what happens when the toxic person in your life has done something to you, has created drama and arguments and manipulations and toxic patterns in your life, and you completely forget they happen. Basically, what happens is you have a cognitive suppression of the event and a cognitive suppression of all of the multiple occurrences of this going on. It's a protective mechanism and a self-defense mechanism in order for you to stay safe in toxic situations. I know ironic right because what you want is out but it's our, our brain's way of keeping us safe when we are having to survive things when we are in survival mode and having to endure and survive situations it's a very primitive and basic thing that our brains do in order to keep us moving forward and living our lives while having to survive situations it's not the part of the brain that logically knows oh i could just walk away it's almost like a disassociation that happens from the triggering event, from the toxic manipulations and tactics used against you. From so much so that in a matter of seconds, even minutes, hours, days, whatever it is, the memory of what happens fades. If you disassociate quickly, then it could be happening while it's happening, where you stop thinking that what's happening at the moment is an offense against you and you start seeing it as something you need to fix and you forget and almost like you know check out from the thing that's happening it makes it really hard when trying to leave toxic situations doesn't it because you can't remember you can't remember you can't articulate a story you can't tell anyone to get the validation to know if it's even toxic what you're going through because you can't remember or you remember pieces of it or you remember how it started but you don't remember all of the things that were said and done i know that when people come out of toxic relationships and when they're in coaching and trying to work their way through what actually happened a lot of times memories will come up and it's like a fog lifts or a curtain you know parts and then there's clarity and there's awareness of the things that they live what through happens? why does this happen to us when you are in a traumatic situation brain chemistry gets involved right so let's talk about what happens in the brain chemistry a bit so that you can understand a bit about what's going on there's five really major things that happen here one is oxytocin okay so if you are having an argument call it an argument with a toxic person, right? If you're having a situation where they're gaslighting you, let's say, and you, you start out having a conversation, it spins quickly into a debate, which turns really rapidly on you where they start gaslighting you and attacking with the gaslighting and you start getting enraged, upset, all of the things that happen when you're being when someone's gaslighting you right and then and then that turns into blame shifting and suddenly you're caretaking the narcissistic person well what happens in that caretaking or what happens in the coming back together say they give you silent treatment and then suddenly they talk to you again or say you kiss and make up so to speak right whatever it is that happens when there's the physical connection with the narcissistic person if it's a parent, maybe they they give you a, an ounce of affection, whatever it is, it raises your oxytocin. Oxytocin is a bonding chemical. If you have that bonding chemical going on for someone that's treating you terribly, the brain starts to get confused, right? We start to, we are attached and love someone who is harming us. Okay, so there's one piece. Another piece is the dopamine. So dopamine is what causes the feeling of craving and longing it causes the feelings and the actions of pursuit and it motivates you so what happens when you are with a toxic person is they are lying to you they're gaslighting you they're projecting they're blaming they're calling you names they're going silent they're walking away they're threatening whatever they're doing and then afterward your feeling of lack of closure in the argument or, or discussion, your feeling of not being heard, your feeling of needing something from it 
starts to raise your levels of dopamine. Your dopamine become, you get in a dopamine cycle where you're chasing the need for an answer. You're chasing the need for things to be better. You're chasing, so it creates that drive, that motivation to seek resolution because that's what we should do in healthy relationships, right? Is seek resolution when there's any conflict. Well, it goes kind of overboard because other things come into play. So you've got this motivating force of the dopamine happening and you've got the oxytocin when there's any connection or, or thoughts of them can even create the, the oxytocin, remembering the good times, boom, you're flooded with it, okay? And, and then, then you've got androgynous opioids. So that is a brain chemical reaction, basically in a nutshell, withholding in life, withholding creates pain, literal pain, use or attaining creates pleasure. So it's a brain reaction of pain pleasure. And that's why it hurts so bad, guys. That's part of why the pain is so intense because there's a ton of withholding happening. There's no closure, there's no conversation, there's no resolution, there's not being heard. I could go on and on. Okay. So then another thing is your cortisol levels. Your cortisol levels are rising. The stress of that creates all kinds of havoc in your body, in your nervous system, in your emotions, and in your thoughts high levels of cortisol are not healthy for you. So, and high levels of cortisol are gonna keep you in a feeling of angst and conflict, right? So that's going on at the same time. Now think about it. When you've got high levels of cortisol going on at the same time as high levels of oxytocin going on, your brain starts to go, okay, I need to check out from this. This is conflicting and confusing. And in order for me to feel okay and go with the feelings of oxytocin, I'm going to have to forget all the stuff this cortisol rising is telling me, right? So another thing that happens is the adrenaline's pumping. When your adrenaline pumps, think about it. You can do amazing and astounding things, but you don't know how you got there. You're in a rushed state. You're in a sped up state. Nervous, your nervous system is going really fast. You don't feel things as much. You don't react to things as much. You just do, okay? And so if you're shutting down and dissociating and checking out from the actual thing that's happening because of this mix of chemicals going on, it's it's a fast and rapid thing and kind of a numbing agent. So, all right. So. That's kind of why it happens. That's the 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 brain part of why it happens in a nutshell. And remembering that this is a survival skill can be helpful. Remembering that that this isn't healthy. If you find yourself having these episodes, something is up. Okay, something is wrong in the relationship or something needs to be checked for yourself as to why you're not coping with conflicts and stuff in the moment so that you can see if the person is even toxic or okay, not. Right. So what can you do about it? What can you do? There's quite a few things you can do. Obviously, get out of the relationships, right? Or step away or go no contact. That's a given. So let's let's talk about even afterward, when you're away and you've been away for a while, it's still there because see, you've already checked out from it. You've already taken that memory and shoved it into the back of your subconscious and put it in a box somewhere and you don't wanna open it. So it's important to open it and look at these things. So making a list of the toxic things this person has done, even if you can only remember a teeny tiny bit, even if it's like all you write is that time we went to the park, even if that's enough for your memory to go, oh yeah, I remember that. Okay. Anything that helps you remember the toxic things this person did and the things that you lived through. And this is not to make a list so that you feel terrible. This is to make a list so that you remember, so that you can recall and so you can process. If you are in still with a toxic person or you are in a, the part of recovery and healing that you don't know which way to turn or you don't have a, a, a plan, or even if you do have a plan, make a written recovery plan for yourself. Write out what you think it should look like, what you would hope for for yourself. Make a plan so that you can stick to it. Because the thing is when you slip into cognitive dissonance, when you slip into this amnesia effect, you forget to keep working on yourself and you focus back on the toxic person. And that comes to the next step, get therapy, get coaching, whichever suits you, whoever suits you, find someone that understands this stuff. Find someone that has lived through it because the understanding from experience in this type of situation is invaluable to helping others get through it, okay? Um, 
the validation that comes from knowing the other person has experienced it can be a help when it comes to remembering the things that happen and to at least acknowledging that there is some amnesic effect going on right now. This is an important one. Start living in the truth. Start living in the reality, not the fantasy. Stop fantasizing about the good times with the toxic person, with the narcissist, okay? Stop pretending that that's the real them and the toxic stuff is something else. Both things are them. Both things are masks, okay? Both things are toxic. And yes, the truth is uncomfortable, it's painful, and it's something that takes a while to face. So if you are trying to live in the truth and you're really struggling with it, not uncommon, just keep going, get some support, okay? Super important here is learning to value yourself. What does that even mean to you? And we will talk later this week about valuing yourself, about self-healing and finding self and self-worth. So we'll go into that in another video this week, but it's important. Start to value yourself. Stop devaluing yourself. Setting boundaries. Setting boundaries is super important for all healing. Yeah. Understand that you can't listen to talk about the narcissist right now. You are in a state of confusion and amnesic effect from the toxic things that have happened to you. And you're trying to find your way out of this fog. You do not need the interference of people giving you reports about what the toxic narcissistic person is doing. You do not need family members or friends or anyone reaching out regarding that person. You don't need people telling you things that like it takes two to tango or whatever. You don't need things that are not helpful to you. Learn to say no to them and that that is okay. Stay away from the toxic person. Stay away from social media of around that toxic person. Just stay away from them. Stay away from thinking about them too much, what they're doing, who they're with, all of that, not helpful to you. Okay. The only thing that's helpful to you to think about the toxic narcissistic person at this point is how they operate, the ways in which they used and manipulated you so that you can see the truth of it. It isn't so that you can check back on them and, and keep your fantasy brain going. If you've experienced this, let me know what you think in the comments and what has happened to you. And if you found anything helpful or useful in remembering, in healing, in anything like that, so we can help others here. Okay, learn to say no to your own urges to reach back to the toxic narcissistic person resist those urges remember that the dopamine is part of this okay it is going to be difficult that's a given it's for most people going to be a challenge to not reach back to not check on them to not wonder what they're doing to not wish for the hoover to not respond to the hoover Whatever. okay listen to your body your body is probably reacting you prob you probably have anxiety you probably have something going on in your gut or your stomach or your shoulders are up at your ears or you have a tension headache or something in your chest your chest is heavy and tight your facial muscles anything listen to your body relax that part of the body okay and then listen to your mind and listen to yourself the more you listen to yourself, the more you learn to remember your intuition and remember to trust yourself, the quicker you can get out of these situations. If you need coaching, group coaching, or peer support, check out the description in each video. There's a list of places to find help there. There's an email if you need to reach out to me. 